Yeah. Coach Ryan, you got me fired up right now. You got me thinking about my kids a lot right now. Um, when you talk about your son Teague, uh, how hard is that first off? Uh, it's, it's hard you know, every time. It, 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 it takes a little bit of you to share because it brings you back, right? When you're when you're talking about something of, of that of that, that, that that that's that's that meaningful to you, it takes a little piece of you. Um, but you weigh uh, you weigh what it can offer others compared to how it's going to impact you. So uh, I do it because because I think I think it it helps. I think it helps. Uh, young people understand that they're not vulnerable, and that, that helps me get my point across. How lost in your life were you at that point? Oh, I was lost. I mean, I was I was uh, beyond lost. I didn't know much. Uh, I was in deep, deep, deep despair. Uh, family struggled, marriage struggled, kids were struggling. It was a tough time for us. Um, and at the time, I really didn't. I did not know God. But I really never put that much effort into knowing why I was here. So it galvanized me to start think about some things that are not earthly. Uh, that you know, the two options, as I say, is there a God or not a God? So there's either evolution is true uh, or God's true. And maybe God caused evolution, but it's either a God or not. So for me, it was a really tough time. Yeah. Um, now you give so much. You always talk about output. You always yeah. talk about like tempo. You have the highest tempo of like one of the humans I've ever seen. How, you know, how much longer can you keep this up, man? It's just like incredible for me to see your output as a human, as a coach, as a father, husband, everything you do as a, a motivator, everything you do, a mentor. You, you always talk about service, but how much longer can you keep this I, tempo? I can ask you the same question. You're everywhere. You're interviewing every time. I, you're, you're, you're all over the world interviewing people. So you got a lot of energy, too. We love what we do. Right? I'm challenged a lot. I got a lot of great people around me. I got a life coach that's really good. This guy named Chet Scott from Built to Lead. He challenges me constantly. Uh, he's challenging me for my 50th birthday, which is next year. We're going to France. We're going to bike in France, in the mountains of France. We're going to do eight stages of the Tour de France. Uh, so he's challenging me on that. He keeps me growing. You know, I'm, I, I want to be able to, I have two sons on earth and one in heaven. I got a daughter on earth. I want to be able to wrestle their kids. And, and, and put it to them, at least for a while, right? That's one of the things I think about. So I gotta take care of my body. It's the only one God gave me. So I wanna make sure I take care of myself. I also know that when I'm suffering, I'm staying humble. So, so I, use, I use the pain of training to keep me uh, humble uh, because it connects you constantly to pain and discomfort. And uh, when we're under duress, we're learning a lot. So, so uh, it's, a li it's a lifestyle and it's reinforced by those I choose to allow into my inner circle of life. Okay, so Coach Dresser is watching him. Yeah. He, he moves unbelievable for yeah. 55 years old. Are you 50 yet? I'm, I'm going to be 50 next time. You're going to be 50, so you're, you're in incredible shape too. Doesn't look like any re joint replacements are on the horizon for either one of you. That's incredible to me. Yeah, I've yeah. never had a surgery. That's, inc <laughs> that's unreal. Right, not great. Yeah, it's... it's yeah, you've never had any anything? No, uh, tonsils. Okay, that doesn't. I had my tonsils out, but I never shoulder, knees, or so. I admire, you know, I admire people uh, that you coach. That I don't know what it's like to go through that, right? Six months recovery, and the and the and the disappointment, right, of not being able to improve because that's how we lead people think they always want to get better. So, uh, but yeah, for me, no injuries. Uh, hopefully, none for a while. You guys are in the same school, coaching school through Dan Gable. He's older than you, obviously, but. Uh, every time I ever ask you for your time, every time I see anybody that's not even media people ask you for time, I've never seen you say no. Yeah. That's incredible t to me. We could do another interview after this for another 20 minutes. I'm not yeah. going to do that. Yeah. But, like, where does that come from? Why do you guys come from the same coaching school? Why are you always so easily accessible? Why is this so important to you? I think that, uh, I think some is my, my, obviously I have a family that just did a really good job raising me. My mom was, was an angel. My mom never assessed me on how good of a wrestler I was or a student. She just loved me, right? That unconditional love that that lot don't get. So I don't want to take for granted that everyone grows up in a home where unconditional love is there. It was for me. Uh, there was if I won a tournament, it was third. There was no dinner wasn't different. Conversation at the table wasn't different. Uh, it was always uh, about me just being the best me, right? So. So when you grow up with that foundation of love, you kind of, I think that's helped. When I look, re reflect, the other thing is I'm just grateful. 
I mean, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of people that were better wrestlers than me, right? There's a lot of people that uh, that uh, could be in the position that I'm in, right? That are uh, love the sport and hardworking, and uh, I just feel I just feel really grateful uh, that I'm able to uh, do the, do the, do something I love and, and and give back and share. Jake Ryan gonna get married soon. You said yeah. that. How proud are you of Jake? I mean. He didn't, you know, finish wrestling out his whole career. He yeah. made the NCAA tournament yeah. for you and almost knocked off, got some revenge for you almost against, yeah, almost. <laughs> same, against Joe Joe same, Smith. Same ending for both of us. <laughs> okay. Our, our, our careers have been very similar. Ironically, in the state semifinals, he uh, blew, his, blew his hand out. In the state semifinals, his senior year, he blew his hand out and had to wrestle in the state finals injured. My senior year, I blew my ankle out in the state finals, in the, in the, in the state quarterfinals and had to wrestle injured. Fast forward at the national tournament, he lost to a Smith in the final seconds, and I lost to a Smith in the final seconds. So we've had very similar paths. I'm really proud that he chose what he chose. He was pretty. He had some 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 injuries, and he really didn't want to get the surgeries and, and continue to wrestle. So, you know, wrestling. Him wrestling is never about me. It's about him and what he wants. So he has a love for for. He's got a great video marketing company. Photography. Photography. He's incredible. He's got an incredible just, eye for it. You know, he'll walk. He'll walk. 30, 40 miles into the heart of the the the, the, uh, uh, the Grand Canyon to get a picture of a tree that's standing by itself uh, because he loves it and uh, it's amazing when people find their deep love and passion what they're willing to do and he's willing to do more uh, in his in the world of photography and picture taking than he was ever as you know someone that just wanted to train and train and train so he found his love right then the day is at this level at this level uh, there's certainly a need to to find the things you love about and hold on to them so I'm really proud of him he's getting married I'm the officiant are you so yeah he asked me to marry him that's pretty really awesome his fiance Abby I married Micah Jordan last week that are you was serious awesome. oh yeah I married Micah and, uh, and Addy got married last week and uh, that was a lot of fun and I've done a few athletes. I'm doing Logan December 15th. Uh, so I got his wedding. So I jokingly say that. How many have you done? Well, I've done, a, so I did Alex Picasso, Cody Magra, Micah Jordan, now Jake Ryan. I'll do Logan Stever. And the thing that I say, all right, is jokingly, but it's true, is that most wrestlers starting out, most are broke. They're broke. They have no money, right? So, so I can save them some money. I'm free. Right? I'm free. You don't charge them anything? No, I don't charge them anything. <laughs> so I ran it through compliance, of course. Got to run it through compliance. But uh, yeah, it's one of the things I really, I've come to embrace and really love the fact that, you know, if the end goal, if the end goal for me is to get to heaven, right? If that's what my mindset is, listen, it's there a lot. Like, I, I, I want to, there's a lot of things I want on earth, but, I, but my main thinking is constantly heaven and when you're constantly thinking heaven things down here are different okay you're I don't even know how to shift gears from that man okay you guys have an unbelievable facility yeah the big running joke is you sleep there you eat your lunch yeah. there you do everything there you use the porta potties there yeah. that's the big running joke yeah. uh Cavalli Center is Cavalli that Center Jennings Center okay incredible Jennings family complex it'll be the new you know, it'll be it'll be the nicest in the world until until a group of people uh, from another institution or organization say we want better and bigger and more, and they'll pass it. But upon its completion, they'll be, it'll be the nicest on earth. What do you do next year? I asked Dresser yeah. what he was going to do with yeah. Car, for example. Sure. Red shirt. What, what yeah. are you doing next year with guys? Are you yeah. going full? You, you want to win every year? Yeah. We, we, you have the greatest runner-up finish in the yeah. history of the tournament. I yeah. mean, it was, yeah. Let, let's call no, it what sure, it is, no, right? Yeah. I mean. What do you do next year? We, we put, so we use common sense, right? We don't blindly jump into this. I mean, the objective is always to put the best team on the mat. So I'm going to put the best team on the mat. And if putting the best team on the mat also makes the most sense, so let's just say, for example, I said one that comes to mind right now, right, is Malik Heimselman. He's probably, of all the, of all the guys we have, is the biggest question mark. What do we do with him? Right? He's been here all summer. He's really impressive. He looks great. You only put him in if he can help at the elite level. Right? Just to have a, a, a really solid 25-pounder in there, why waste a year for him Right, if he's not, he's not really quite ready to be elite? So other than 125, we don't have a ton of question marks. Everyone else can come in and redshirt. Now, it could get complicated if someone goes down. 
at their weight and there's a really good red shirt behind them, then you got a decision like you have Malik. Do you pull them? Do you not pull them? We don't have any many big decisions this year. Uh, the biggest decision I think right now for our staff is when do we pull Malik? Do we pull Malik? Is Malik ready to be pulled at 25? Other than that, Romero, Romero is already red shirted. Ethan Smith is red shirted. Uh, Micah 49. So Micah, Micah may go 49. Well, you, you got three guys for two weights. You know, we got three, three guys all American weights. guys basically. You know, you get the possibility of Micah staying up. Joey going to 49. Keyshawn going to 41. There's just a lot of options in there. And at the end of the day, we'll use common sense. We'll make a decision and move forward with it. Uh, you know, with you guys falling short how you did this yeah. year, I mean, that hurt. My, Miles is incredible. Miles. Miles is the best, uh, probably the hardest working guy, most improved guy. And yeah. for him to lose the way he was going after it. He was. He was up for How good months. do you feel? He, he was going after I was, I was proud of him. I mean, I was proud of him. I mean, he was ready to compete. He trained hard. He was ready for the match. He was excited. You could see by the way the match started. He ran him out of bounds the first time they get back to the center. He's right back in his legs, picks up two, picks up two backs. And he, I mean, he broke position. He made a little mistake. Kudos to, you know, to Nickel for he was giving up backs and gave up backs again. If you don't get pinned there, we got two, two more backs. We're up six, seven, eight, nothing. Didn't work out that way. But love that he went after it. Miles Martin's a leader for us. Um, I mean, you, you, you of course think about what it could have been, right? It could have been epic. Kyle Snyder's walking on the mat and we're three points behind. Right, that's what, if, if, if Miles went, Miles knew, Miles could do the math. He wasn't worried about just focus on just score, wrestling, score, win, make it about the wrestling. Miles wins, we're three points down. The last match of the tournament. It's a four point match. I mean, it was set up for to be epic, but Miles is going to be a great leader for us, great captain. You got four guys in the world team, best yeah. RTC in the, I think in the yeah. country, in my opinion. Uh, you know, two junior or uh, U23 guys, and you got two senior level guys. Yeah, we got one, one in the Greco junior team. Yeah, I mean, so. five guys. Okay. Yeah. Looking at the RTC, how important is it to the growth of Ohio State? Well, it's. I don't. I, don't, I mean, I would say this to any coach at uh, at this level that you this is a strong statement I've made it a few times already talking to coaches you can't win if you don't have a good one there's no question yeah. I, don't think there's any, I think it's a non-negotiable right there are certain things that organizations have to have in order to climb to be elite and I mean can't might be almost too strong of word but it's never happened before in the hundred years of college wrestling, no team has ever won that hasn't had a training center. Elite people training there. It's a formula for success no matter what organization you look at around the world. You must have elite people around you. You must have a standard that is so high that people are constantly striving to get there. When you have Olympic champs or, or elite level wrestlers around incoming freshmen, they grow because they can be put under duress and they have examples and example of greatest teachers. So it, for me, it's a pillar. For me, it's a pillar. So the pillar is I got a fundraiser. I got to continue to build our fan base, make friends, and keep it strong. Nobody hustles more than you. Would you hustle ten times more if it turned into a bidding war with, you know, Oklahoma just took all the guys from Stillwater, yeah. literally, except yeah. for one guy. Yeah. If it turned into Kyle or Logan leaving, would you do whatever it took of to course. keep them? Of course, no question about it. I mean, there are things that there are things that 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 in life you deem as non-negotiable, and they're not. So, so. If someone offered Kyle or, or Kyle felt it was a better training situation, or it's not always about the money. Or Maryland, right? say Maryland, about the Maryland, Maryland whatever. Right? Maryland, you do everything you can, you do everything you can to keep him, but at the same time, if you can't give him what he needs to improve or to have joy, then he has then he should go. So let's play this out of right, let's just say for Maryland, for, for Kyle, for example, if I truly love him. I'll provide him with everything I can to help him, but I will also understand that there might come a point in time where I can, and then he should go where that is. Right? I can't provide a, a place close to his family. I can't I? Can't. It's too much of a distance. But I can provide him. I went and picked up. I, I helped him. I helped him get Taha here. Taha's training with him now. Right? He's good. Went up. It's not bad. I mean, Kyle. Kyle, what, what, what can I do to help you? How can I help you? He doesn't. He's his best coach. He's a great, he's a great self coach. He said, "Just bring me meat, bring me people, bring me training part, help me." He made the contact with Taha, set up the plans. I picked up the airport, drop them off. They're buddies. They love each other. Love training together. So, yeah, anything I can do to help them grow, uh, I help. Is he irreplaceable? Man, he's pretty close. Yeah, he's he's pretty darn special. He's he's one of the he's he's holy. He's the holiest person I know. He's a holy person. He's he's just so 
He's so rooted in heaven that the only things that, for the most part, that come out of his mouth, his actions show, are the same exact things that he brings in. He's a reflection of his thoughts, and his thoughts are good. His thoughts are always good. I admire him a lot. He's helped me a lot. Okay, last thing, you know, uh, there's been a lot of controversy at Ohio State. Yeah. Um, you know, now there's a thing, Urban Meyer paid administrative leave. Sure. Okay, something about sure. uh, assistant coach, domestic abuse. Mm -hmm. Apparently, you know, we're mandated reporters in an educational sure. situation. You are, I am, yeah. as a teacher. Um, and then, you know, the Doc Strauss thing, that wasn't under yeah. your tenure. He was gone, obviously, yeah. before 20 you... 20 years ago. 20 years, yeah, yeah, 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, when you look at this stuff... Um, how does this does this affect your program, and, and how do you deal with it? And, and does it affect or matter to you guys yeah. in a sense? What 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 is Ohio State? What are you doing with Ohio State? In yeah. So under you know in regard to the matters, you know I, I, I due to university guidelines, I can't discuss the matters in particular. I can discuss how much I love Urban Meyer, how much I trust Urban Meyer, what good friends we are. I care about him. Uh, I can discuss the fact that um, that in general society. Uh, unfortunately, uh, likes to um, develop a theory, uh, their own, come up with a mindset that they believe is truth, and then despite all the information that they get, they discard the information that might disprove the theory that they are not sure about, and they only allow, they only allow information that fits their hypothesis into their decision making. So. Uh, there's an investigation undergoing. I'm not part of it. I recommend, listen, if someone on the Strauss side, if something happened to somebody, they need to come forward, share the information. I think every human being, right, as a coach, all I want is things to be fair for my student athletes, for the officiating. I just want fairness. From a human being standpoint, we just we want justice. So I don't, I'm not involved in the case. Um, and like I said, it was a long time ago. I wasn't here. And, uh, I, I just wish that people would slow down, not be so quick to judge, not be to, so quick to jump up on a pedestal and finger wag and say, let me get all the facts before I start judging. Does information move too fast? Mm -hmm. And have you had any contact with Jim Jordan who they hung all these crazy allegations on? Yeah, I mean, I know the Jordan family. I know Jim. I know Jeff. I've talked to Jim. I saw Jim at the wedding. You know, I'm... I love the Jordan family. I think Jim Jordan, as far as I know, has incredible integrity, but I wasn't there. I, I wasn't around. Uh, and I really can't comment too much more than that. Yeah. Yeah. You probably got some stuff going on. I know you probably got to go shake some hands, kiss yeah, some babies, give some speeches. You got anything else for me? No, man, thanks. Appreciate hey, all the Thanks for the time. Do. It's always great Thanks, to talk man. to you, and I got to do a quick selfie with you, all right? Thanks, man. Sounds good.